Okay. Um, if you have a Bible, you might want to turn to Luke chapter 10. Um, we'll be looking at that at some point today. Um, to, I, sorry, I didn't, with the week, we've, I also just wanted to say big, big thank you to, um, two of them have gone out of the room, but thank you to everyone who cooked for us this coming, last week. Um, we had a, a week in hospital with Gabriella, and which was not much fun. Uh, is an understatement, but we're, she's home now. She's not better yet, but she's home, and um, the doctors seem to think they have some some useful information. I'm, I'm, uh, no, it's not good news if I'm honest. In, in the sense that um, that we don't know how to treat what they're talking about. But um, I'm being real, okay? So sorry to. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, the uh, they 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 think they've maybe sort of narrowed down what's going on. Um, I'm 80% confident that they know what they're talking about. I, I know that's, that doesn't sound it's all medical arrogance. It's just that when you watch and observe the situation, you kind of see things that they don't all the time. So um, sometimes doctors are very good at saying, ah, right, that's it, and they haven't looked at the whole thing. Sorry, Charlie, but that's the way it is. Um, you need a, a proper radiographer who can really get to the bottom of stuff. Um, you know, so I, I think it's been useful, but it, it was really hard work. So thank you for everyone who cooked. Thank you for everyone who uh, just looked after us, walked the dog, or visited, or whatever. So thank you. Um, we'll keep you posted. But do keep praying for Ella because she was struggling. Um, okay. So my point being, uh, life works with Jesus. That's what we're talking about. Life works with Jesus. Um, I, I honestly, firmly, completely believe that our lives work best when we are with Jesus, and that also it is a life's work to follow Jesus. Um, and so this week, I want to just touch on how we are when we are with people, being with people. Life works best when we're with Jesus, with people, if that makes sense. Um, we talk about, in this world, don't we, we talk about quality time with people, as if um, most of our time is not quality, so we, we kind of like, we, have, we even have to say quality time because our mindset is that most of the time is not very good quality time. We talk about, it's basically sort of learning how to hang out with people with Jesus. That's what I'm talking about today. So I want you to imagine some scenarios, if that helps you get into this. Um, I'm talking, um, imagine you're having a meal with the family, and, I mean, this never happens in our house, but, um, you know, dad's on the phone, or dad's got half his mind on work. Mum has got half her mind on cleaning the kitchen after this, the, the, everything that's gone on to prepare the meal. One child is wolfing down their food as fast as possible because they need to get back to the TV that they were watching before they had the meal. The other child is kicking off because they don't like carrots. And we're all around the table together, but we're not all together. Does that make sense? You know, you, you know those situations? Um, or, or, for instance, you, are, you meet up with a friend. Uh, this, this is a classic. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. It's never happened to me. And you, you, they, they say to you, how, how's your day going, or how's your, how's things going, or whatever. And maybe you've not had a great, you know, week. And you say, so you say, oh, I've not had a great day, or whatever. And they go, oh, you've not had a great day. Let me tell you about my day. And then they tell you about their day. And then 15 minutes later, you realise that all you know about is their day. And that conversation had turned into a monologue, you know. <laughs> so they're kind of there with you, but they're not really there with you. They're with themselves. Does that make sense? Or, I don't know if you've ever done that yourself. You know. Never? Okay. You know, or if you've been in someone's house and you go to visit them and they don't turn the TV off, that really just becomes like, you know. And in fact, I did, we did a cat visit, Daniel and I. The thing is about TV is you just can't watch. We went to visit this guy and he was really into cycling and he had this cycling uh, mountain bike challenge thing. And Daniel, uh, doing, he was very focused, I have to say. Credit to Daniel. He was getting on with the cat thing. This guy was talking, and I'm just kind of thinking, wow, look at that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm supposed to be the befriender who's like, you know, that guy's doing this jump, and this, and always, always falling off, and I'm trying not to do all these things, because these things are going through your mind, and you're kind of, oh, oh, oh. yeah, cap, right, this guy's in debt, and he needs help, but he's got, you know, you know I'm there, but I'm not there, yeah? Um, or another, I'm just, these are just examples from cap, we just had a, a, another cap visit recently, where there was this massive dog, and now I was the dog protector in this situation because Daniel's not overly keen on dogs. Neither am I, but I know how to handle them now because we've got one. And the focus just becomes the dog. 
you're talking with people, but all that is is this dog, or it can be sometimes... Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, but I wasn't particularly focused with what was going on elsewhere because it took my distract, you know, it took my attention, you know? You, you know that situation where you're with people but you're not actually with them, if that makes sense. That's what I'm thinking about. And we live in a world where we've got a lot of problems, we've got a lot of issues that, that help or dis not don't help situations. So, for instance, mo the mobile technology of today is perfect at distracting us from not being with people, isn't it? Um, you, you know the situation where we're being continually interrupted or distracted or entertained or, you know, because we're connected with everybody else. <laughs> I might be having, uh, you know, coffee with Graham and, but, and I'm not connecting with him because I'm also connecting with three or four other people whilst I'm supposed to be having a conversation. And so he's thinking, are we here? Are we here? But, well, I'm, I'm not here. Yeah. So the mobile world we live in um, is very distracting and and often the things on the screen, um, you know, because I see Graham re in real life here, and if I'm honest, it's not, but on the screen everything looks brighter and more in in encouraging, you know, and I think, would I rather look at him or would I rather look at this? This is more exciting, you know? So actually, uh, mobile screens, uh, the same applies for all of you, so don't worry about it, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm not just picking on Graham. Um, do you know what I mean? But there's something about a screen that is, it makes everything look slightly better, doesn't it? You know, and we Photoshop ourselves slightly and say, oh, look, my, somebody's sitting in a picture of themselves. That's amazing. And, and we're distracted. Yeah? Um, or we also live in a world that's very busy. Don't we? So we're over-occupied with all kinds of things. Um, and I even found myself, um, at the moment, I've just... Uh, uh, complete aside, one of my sort of recreational things, apart from riding my bike, is obviously playing the tuba, and I'm just, I've got this little project where I'm um, transcribing bass lines of the great bass players, and I'm trying to record them and trying to make it sound like them. And so I'm thinking up this morning, got, got up this morning, I'm thinking, oh, I'd really like to get on with that tomorrow, just to have a little bit of time. Where I can, am I thinking about my message <laughs> today? You know, this is a preacher's workshop. Anyone been to be a preacher's workshop? This is the complete wrong way to go about it. So if I start talking about bass lines in the middle of this, which I already have, um, you'll know that I'm slightly distracted. But, you know, we're so busy, we've got like 4,000 things going on in our minds. How many of you are thinking about what you're going to have for lunch now? Uh, you know, if you if somebody's got... Yeah, exactly. It, there you go, haven't put the chicken in. There's, you know, there's things going on. And, and, you know, we live in a world where just there's so much going on. And so even if I do sit down and have a chat with Alan and Shari, my mind's thinking about something else, probably. Uh, you know, whatever it is. Um, and we live in a world where multitasking is a virtue, isn't it? So, and apparently women are better at it than men. <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll be very honest with you, I cannot multitask at all, so I don't, you know, and, and that in itself is, is yeah, it's just... But I, I think even if you are a woman, you can't be 100% focused on one thing if you've got something else spinning at the same time. Oh, does it? It brings on dementia. Fantastic. Thank you for telling me that. Because, because that means now we're, um, life works with Jesus um, and we're actually going to prevent dementia today. So thank you. That's helpful. Um, so those are just sort of modern problems. But we've got age-old problems, which, you know, I mean... Stress isn't a new thing, you know. So the, the stresses and strains of life have been going on forever. And, and actually, one of the, the age-old things is that we're preoccupied with ourselves. You know, we always have been since the beginning of time, that people tend to be thinking about themselves, whether it's positively or negatively, and they don't tend to think about the other person first. You know, we tend to think about ourselves. So the being with other people, I've just described, is full of pitfalls, isn't it? It's just like, it's, it's quite hard work. Um, actually being with people. You can physically be there, but actually are you present to them? Really living with them. And I was challenged as I was talking to my mentor a few weeks ago by this, and, and he was just talking about, I get so frustrated with people when they're not living in the now. What's going on here and now? What is God doing here and now with this conversation I'm having? Just for five seconds, even if it's just that moment, what is God doing here and now? Being in the moment being present to what's going on. And so, I'm going to start with some good news. Some good news is that Jesus wants to be with us. Right now. I mean, we've been talking about God speaking to us and everything with the prophecy school and stuff. And um, 
one of the things that um, Damien taught was that it says for us to eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. And what does that mean? That God is eagerly wanting to speak to us. Um, you know, in John 4, uh, it says after Jesus has this dialogue with, um, with, with this woman at the well, Jesus says, God is looking for those who worship him in spirit and truth. So it's not like you worship him and he kind of thinks, well, that's not quite good enough. Well, come back when you're singing a bit more in tune or you're, you know, or you're, you're bowing a bit lower or whatever your worship is. God is looking, is someone, someone's worshiping. I'm going to go there. And so God wants to be with us. Jesus likes to be with us. He likes to be hanging around with people. He likes to be with us and he likes us to be with other people too. So we're going to turn to um, Matthew, uh, Luke rather, chapter 10 and I'm just going to read you a very short story um, that involves Jesus, which is right at the end of Luke chapter 10. So if you found chapter 10, you probably need to turn the page because we're starting in verse 38. Um, and here is the story. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So here's the thing. Martha had welcomed Jesus into her house. She had welcomed him in as a guest. So presumably, she wanted to be with Jesus. Yeah? She wanted to be with Jesus because she said, come in, be in my house. I mean, if I said to Sheila, so come around to our house and then just put her in the living room and then just went to bed, this is a bit odd, isn't it? Because, no, you know, I'd normally want to spend some time with Sheila. That's why I'm saying come in, unless I want her to walk the dog or something. <laughs> and I say, come in, here's the dog, I'm off. You know, I mean, that's a bit strange. Or come in and maybe look after the children. But generally, we want to be with people if you, you say, come into my house. So presumably Martha wanted to be with Jesus. She, she invited him in. And my guess is, and then this is just my guess, but my guess is that Martha um, was used to doing this kind of thing. My guess is that Martha was the kind of person that enjoyed... Uh, inviting people into her house. My guess is that she was a hospitable person and she regularly welcomed people in, so it wasn't just Jesus that she, you know, because she, she just seems to be the kind of person who yeah, come in, come, come and have some food, come, come and hang out at my house. Um, so I think it's probably a, a normal thing for her to do. Um, I'm guessing in this culture, it's quite a cultural thing as well. You know, you just come in and just be with, be with us. And so she liked people to be in her house um, and she, maybe she prided herself in that, you know, because we can, you see, I, 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 I do hospitality, you come, come into my house. And so she liked being with people, Jesus is her guest, and in fact, who better a person to have in your house? I mean, here's Jesus walking around, if you can get him into your house, I mean, that's brilliant. So she welcomes him in, and they're in the same building, but they're not actually together. They're not there with each other. Because then as we go through the story, you see Luke, who wrote this, he, he, he tells us the first thing we see as we, we go in, we're like we're visitors with, with Jesus, really, because we're kind of, you know, through the keyhole, it's kind of a bit like that, you know. So Luke sort of takes us in through the door. And who's the first person we see? Well, of course, Jesus is the first person we see, because he's the sort of part, point of the story, really. But, but with Jesus, we see Martha. No. Sorry, we see Mary. And we see Mary sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to his teaching. So we walk into Martha's home, we go through the door like guests ourselves, and we think, oh, well, I'm just going to go and hang out with Jesus and Martha. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm hanging out with Mary and Jesus. Okay, that's interesting. It's Martha's house, but Mary's the one we see first. And he's, she is sitting, listening and hearing his word. Remember last week we talked about listening, and um, it seems here that Mary had a, a hearing ear. She was soaking everything in. She was living in the moment. Jesus is in down. 
he's now in my sister's house. I'm going to make completely the most of this opportunity. You know, I'm not going to miss this. I'm going to live in this moment, this Mary's door. I'm just going to sit at his feet and I'm just going to take it all in. She was completely present to Jesus, completely attentive to the here and now, 100% involved in what he was doing and saying in that moment. So Mary was being with Jesus. So the next thing we're told, as we go through the house, is we, we're told about Martha. Now Martha's the one who invited him in, obviously, and it's her house, but she's not with him. Why? Because she's distracted serving. Now serving in itself is not a bad thing. The Greek word here used for serving is the same word that is used for, for deacon in church. The, the idea of a deacon in the church is someone who serves. So serving in itself is not a bad thing. Okay? So don't get that wrong idea. But the thing is that Martha was distracted with it. That's, that was the problem. She was drawn away um, from what was important at that moment in time. Another way that the, if you go into the, the concordance and, the, and the, the lexicons of these things, another way of just translating this, what was going on here, that she was over-occupied. Anyone here ever over-occupied with stuff? Yeah? We talked about rest, didn't we, a few weeks ago as well, that idea of and uh, how difficult it is for us to rest because rest in, in Jesus is that complete just say I'm going to be deliberately unproductive. You know, and but we in this world are just so busy, we're so overoccupied. And this is what's going on with Martha. So she wasn't present to Jesus at all because she was overoccupied with all it all kinds of other things, even though this was going on in her house. And I'm sure we've all had that experience where there's just so much going on in here that we're just not here. So Martha complains to Jesus and she says, well, Mary isn't helping out, Jesus. I don't know if you've noticed here, I'm doing some good work in the kitchen and uh, Mary's not helping out. Tell her to pitch in. Now, I'm guessing in that culture that would have been quite a reasonable request. I know it sounds maybe a little bit shocking to us now today, but back in those days, I'm guessing that she had a good point culturally, and you might have expected, and most men to kind of go, yeah, what are you doing sitting here? Get over there and start doing some work. But Jesus speaks. And again, this does tie in with what we talked about last week in the listening, because just how does Jesus speak to her? He doesn't say, he says Martha, and then he says his, her name again. Martha, Martha. Tune in here. Listen in what's going on. Get that listening ear go. You are anxious about many other things. Many things have taken your attention, have taken your, you've distracted away from what's going on. You see, for Jesus, sorry ladies, for Jesus multitasking is not a virtue <laughs> in this situation. You know, you are doing so many other things here, but that is not a virtue. One thing is important, says Jesus. And Mary has chosen that one thing, and it won't be taken from you. See, out of the many things that Mary could have chosen to do, or maybe even the many things that she could have done all at the same time, Jesus says the one thing is important. Simply just to be with the person you've invited into your house, who happens in this case to be Jesus. Being here, being here and now in this moment overrules everything else, trumps everything else that's going on. And so, really what Jesus is saying, Martha, you're here, but you're not here. Mary, you're here, and you're here, and that's the most important thing, that's the most precious thing. And so if you're going to be with someone, you be with, be with someone, especially if it's Jesus. And the good news is Jesus wants to be with us. And we often talk about Christianity, don't we? we I've welcomed Jesus into my life. We, we say it like that, yeah? Too often I wonder whether we welcome him into our house, if you like, into our lives, but are we actually there with him? <laughs> you know? But the good news is, it's, it's, it's not like we should beat ourselves up about it, but the good news is Jesus wants to be with us, in us. One of his names, is it not, is Emmanuel which means God with us. Not Emmanuel means God with us sometimes if we're good enough, or God with us sometimes if he feels like it, or God with us sometimes when 
you know, and you can name that, but just God with us. It's pretty simple. He doesn't like to make it too complicated for us because he knows we're pretty simple. So it's just God with us. That's it. Jesus, God with us. And if you read through the, the stories here, you find that Jesus comes to people, doesn't he? Mary and Martha here, he came to them and, and Mary and Vice, Martha invited him. He comes to Zacchaeus, doesn't he? He came to the woman at the well. He came to Jairus, whose daughter was dying, and he, he, he went. He comes. He comes to them and he comes to us. And we need to learn how to be with him. Now, I was reading, I haven't had a chance all week to go into my office, but I'm, it's one of two books, but I'm pretty sure this is a quote from a book called Being Disciples by Rowan Williams, who's the former two times Archbishop of Canterbury, I think there's been two since then now. And he says this, It has sometimes been said that the real problem in prayer is not the absence of God, but the absence of us. It's not that God isn't there, it's nine times out of ten that we're not. We're all over the place, entertaining memories, fantasies, anxieties. God is simply there in unending patience saying to us, so when are you actually going to arrive? When are you going to sit and listen and stop roaming around and be present? And I thought, this is me and my prayer life. Sometimes, you know, I'm sometimes storming up the road, <laughs> thinking, God, where are you? You know, for a Sunday morning, you know, I've got to preach a sermon. I'm thinking, I don't know what to say, and you know, I've had a terrible week or whatever. And, and I'm also thinking about my bike ride tomorrow and what baseline thing I did to mention it again. Um, and, and I've got to get the shopping here, and I've got to do this, that, and the other. And I'm saying, yeah, but I can't hear from you, God. You know, you know, you don't seem to be here this morning. You, you can. What's just to say? I'm here. Where are you? You've been a bit like Martha. But one thing is important, and Mary chose it. And so Jesus is with us, so make the most of him being in your house. If you're a Christian, make the most of that. Don't be so distracted and anxious by these many things. Don't be over-occupied elsewhere and learn to be with him in prayer. I'm terrible at this when I'm reading the Bible, and particularly with stuff you know. You know, I mean, how many times have you read Mary and Martha, right? The story. So you just go, Jesus, yeah, I know this one. Jesus, you get to the bottom right, turn the page. And Jesus says, just, just be with him here. When you read it, just be with him. Just let him speak to you. Part of the exercise that we did these workshops, James said, right, you've got 10 minutes. Now you think 10 minutes, 10 minutes to hear from God? Well, actually, 10 minutes is quite a long time. <laughs> when you just stop and don't do anything else, 10 minutes can go on for a long, long time when you're thinking, okay, just be, just be. And as a development of that as well, I think part of this is speaking to us in how we are with other people too. Because if we struggle, it, 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 it is hard sometimes to be with Jesus in this sense because we haven't got somebody to, to look at, if you like. But to practice it by being with people, being with them. Because actually, um, also I joked about Graham and how he looks, but Graham holds the image of God in him. Not just Graham, by the way, but we all do. Because we're all made in the image of God. So when I sit down with Graham, I'm sitting in some way in the presence of Jesus. And I'm not saying he is Jesus, okay? Don't get me wrong. If we haven't gone into some strange cult where we start worshipping Graham every Sunday, we'll put him up at the front and say, let's worship Graham. No, what I'm saying, though, is that he has the image of Jesus in him, so do I, because we're created in God's image, so that when we are together... There is something where we are always in the presence of God. <coughs> and every human is precious and valuable fundamentally because of that thing. Because we are all in God's image. And so there's a challenge that when we are together, we actually take the opportunity and be together. Because it's a valuable and precious thing. That's why when we get together as a family, once we've stopped arguing, it's a good thing, you know? And so there's a challenge here to be present with people where they're at, to value people, and to, to say, you know, there is, there's something precious about this moment. Even if it's just five minutes, even if it's just five seconds, you just sort of get that moment, just dwell with people. And that's going to be different in different situations. And 
And so this is how life works with Jesus in different situations here. It will be different. You know, it may be, you know, a one-off meeting. You don't see someone very, very often, so you just get these, these brief moments in time. But make the most of those moments. So don't be distracted on other things. Um, I'm, I'm challenged by how we are as a family, just when we get together around the tables for our meal time. Particularly um, at the end of Ella's last dinner, so she hadn't eaten for a week, we got around the table together, and Abby was just singing this song. Uh, that was, you know the, the, the um, Frozen song, For the First Time in Forever? Good, you're lucky. <laughs> It's a, I'm going to sing. I won't sing it now because it's horribly addictive and it's just it's one of those things that go. But the words are for the first time in forever. Oh, I've done it now. For the first time in forever. Anyway, she's laying the table going, for the first time in a week, we're eating together. And she's singing this as she's laying the table. This is Abigail for you. But she realized that this was a precious moment. This was a holy moment. That we're going to eat together for the first time. Probably a day later, we were then kind of worrying about who, how much carrots we need to eat and, you know, can I go off to tell you now? But it, I'm deliberately trying that when we are together, we are together. Because they're precious moments. And, and we meet with the Lord as we do that. That's my personal challenge. Um, and, and it works different ways. I'm just, I want to, I'm going to embarrass Reg, but one of the reasons why Reg um, is the one that people uh, want to see at Job Club, I think, in particular, is because he's got a real knack of just being with people. It's a gift you have, Rich. You know, so when people come in on Tuesday, they are his sole focus. You know, uh, and, and so uh, he has this way of just kind of just just being with people, getting down where they're at, just saying hi. And so I want to commend that. And keep going, Rich. Good, good gift you've got there. Oh, Bryony's not here, but Bryony came to visit us um, in, in hospital uh, with, when Ella was in, in just she was just on the way home from work. I think. Friday, I think it was, just had a half an hour thing, just popped in. And I tell you what she didn't do, so that she was present for Ella, is oftentimes when someone's sick, and we experienced this uh, a while back, as we observed a family with who the grandma was, was dying of cancer, and so she couldn't really see very well, so we start, and we all speak very well, and as a result, everyone was talking about her with her in the room. Yeah? So they weren't actually present to her, she was just a body there. But what Bryony did, which is brilliant, even though Ella did not give any response backwards because she's just in her zone and won't talk to anybody about anything, she was continually talking to me and talking to Ella like she was there. So she was present to Ella, and then Ella was present to her even though she wasn't speaking, you see? So that it works different ways in different situations. But I want to, that, that's a gift, you know, because too often we just think, I don't know how to cope with this, so I'm just going to ignore it. Yeah? But then it becomes then a, a precious and holy moment because we're all in a, this place together. Um, my my best man, Callum, who some of you might have met a few months ago when he was over, his mum died of cancer. Um, but he and this is where I heard the word first because he said, "I've just come to be with mum in her last days to be present." Because his mum got to the stage uh, with brain cancer where basically the had to feed her and she was in this sort of um, um, hospice. Okay. But he said, I've just come to be with her and to be present to her. And if that means just feeding her off a spoon, then I'm with her in this moment. Now, that would have been different 20 years ago. He would have come home and they would have been chatting, they'd have been watching the rugby together because they're big Wales fans. You know, and that would have been a different thing. To be present with mum then would have been, let's watch the rugby together, and now we're in the same place at the same time, doing the same, you know, we're present with one another, you see? But, so, just be, allow Jesus to, 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 to live in the moment, these moments, because they're precious, holy moments. To be present. It's a great word, that, to be present. It's, there's one thing to be with someone, but to be present with them. Is, is an entirely different thing. And that's a holy moment when we learn to find Jesus in the here and the now. Because he wants to be there in the here and the now. And I think if we can learn to do that with people, then we might stand half a chance of being doing that with, with Jesus. Because it's actually, hopefully, easier when you've got somebody you can actually 
shake their hand or you know, give them a hug or whatever. And as we learn to do that, our lives will be so much richer as we live like that. Not constantly scattered, but gathered together to be with him and to be with the people he's brought in. That's the rich way of life. The challenge is the rich way of life, which I think Jesus brings us into. Let's pray. And I want to pray particularly as we, we have feasts, you know, because there'll, because there'll be people coming. I'm not saying don't do the washing up, by the way. Because actually, uh, funny enough, funny enough, I think some of the most powerful times I've had have been when I've been in a kitchen with someone or I've been stacking chairs or something, because then you actually just, you're connecting with somebody in a way. Yeah. So I'm not saying don't serve, and I don't think Jesus was saying don't serve, but he was saying the most important thing here is people rather than just activity. So, but let's just pray, and, and let's also pray that we can be with one another and be with, particularly with our guests that come in um, this afternoon. Lord, we thank you for the here and the now. We thank you that we are currently living in the here and the now. In fact, we always live in the here and the now in reality because this is where we are. We can't be in the future and we can't be in the past, even though, forgive us, Lord, where we do live sometimes in the past and we sometimes yearn for the future. But, Lord, we are here and we are now right in this moment. And so I pray, teach us how to live in that with one another and with you. Teach us how to be in your presence now, in this moment. Teach us how to be in your presence as we're with one another that we learn how to be with people and be rich in our lives for that, not to be scattered all over the place and just spread so thin that we are actually nowhere. But centre us in you and centre us in our hearts in you and bless us richly as we gather together in your name. And so I pray particularly this afternoon as we have lunch together that you would enable us just to choose that one thing that's important and to be with you as we are with one another. And I pray, particularly for our guests, that people would come um, from all different places that would come today. Let us bless them by being with them, and that they would know that they are with you in this moment. Thank you. Thank you.